Satan's two purposes for demons is simply, number one, to keep people from being saved. And number two, if he fails at that, to keep Christians from being fruitful and growing in God's grace. It's that simple. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, and said, We're not ignorant of Satan's strategies. Satan has a strategy, this undermined plot, and his goal is to keep people saved. Now, this is what I discovered when I was witnessing to my grandfather and my dad. Now, both of them, I, I, we lived together in the same house, and both of them were atheists. I was the only Christian among the group. And I would witness, I would talk about Jesus, but they just didn't seem to be receptive until one day God spoke to me and told me to come against Satan, who's blinding the minds of my grandfather, and then later to my, with my dad. And so when I realized Satan is blinding his mind, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, you all know the passage. The God of this age has blinded the minds of those who cannot see the glorious gospel of Christ. It didn't say they would not see. It says they cannot see. So God says, you don't blame a blind person for not enjoying the color of the rainbow because he can't see it. And so the Lord said, the reason why your grandfather cannot see how beautiful the gospel is, is because Satan has blinded him. So there were demons behind my grandfather keeping him blinded. So when I took authority and told the devil to leave, then I asked God to send forth laborers to his path. And God says, I'm sending you. It, it will be you that will lead your grandfather to the Lord. And it worked. My grandfather turned around. He gave his heart to Christ and he got saved. Now the same thing ended up happening with my father. He was a bar owner selling, you know, alcohol. Uh, the complete opposite of me. I'm, I'm bringing people in a new wine and he's giving them the old wine. So uh, I began to pray for my father the same way. Sure enough, something happened to my, my dad. My dad began to change. He had suffered a mild stroke and that made him wake up to, you know, mortality. And at that moment, we had a guest speaker that came and he ministered to my dad. He said, Tom, Jesus loves you. And at that moment, my dad, he began to break down and cry. He says, you know, ever since I, I got this stroke, not one person from the bar, not one of my best friends have ever called to check up on me. No one has visited me. But then this is what he said to my my friend, that guest speaker, he said, but the people of my, my son's church, they don't stop calling, they don't stop visiting, checking up on me. And the guest speaker said, don't you see, that's where the love of God is. And, and Tom, you need to be saved too. And my dad gave his heart to Christ. Later, I got to end up baptizing him. He wanted to be baptized. And, and so he gave his life to Christ. Two atheists that it looked like they could never change. But God began to show me it was Satan behind them. And right now, there's some of you, you're, you're having the devil working behind you. He, he, he's, he's making you not believe in God. He's making you question the divinity of Christ. He's getting you caught up in false religions because Satan doesn't want you to give your life to Christ. Don't you get this? This is Satan's ultimate purpose. He tries to blind the minds of those who don't believe. So his strategy is to send demons and to use whatever strategy they think would be, work best with someone. With one person, it might be tests and trials that make them turn away from God. To another, it might be uh, someone bringing them a false message and then they believe that message. It might be their upbringing that the demons work to causing someone not to believe. But that is Satan's number one purpose, that he uses demons to keep people from being saved. But, now listen, if he can't succeed at that, then his second purpose is to keep Christians from growing in God's grace. Listen to what Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. He says, but I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. You hear what Paul is saying? Satan is still working even on God's children. He's not writing to sinners. He's writing to people who've given their life to Christ. And he says, I'm afraid that Satan's working on your mind. And may I say this? For some of you, Satan's been working on your mind. He's making you resent the church. He's making you angry toward the pastor. He's making you doubt the gospel, even though you believe. You got baptized in water. Some of you even got filled with the Spirit, spoke in tongues. And others, God has used you in great ways, but your mind is being led astray. 
You're thinking of getting a divorce without scriptural grounds. You're falling into sexual immorality. You're having hatred and jealousy and envy and greed working in your life. In other words, Satan is working on you. He, some of you know what he's doing? He's telling you, you don't need to go to church. Why do you need to go to church? You don't need a pastor. You don't need, what a lie from hell. But he convinces Christians of that. And how about you? Is Satan working at leading your mind astray? Because here's what Satan recognizes. If, since he couldn't stop you from getting saved, he's going to stop you from being fruitful so you don't lead others to Christ. So your life doesn't bear fruit. So no one wants to be like you because they see how messed up you are. In other words, even though you got out of the world, Satan works at getting the world back into you so that you look like the same person. You live like the same person. You talk like the same person. You, you, you walk like the same person you used to be before you got saved. And this is what Paul says to the Corinthian church. I'm afraid that Satan's working on your minds. Something in your thinking's not right. You're not thinking in line with the Bible. You're starting to adopt worldly ideas, worldly philosophies. You start to change your moral viewpoint, your moral compass. I think that's what's happening to Pope Francis. So please pray for him when he goes on to this idea of blessing same-sex union. It's just not, it, it's just Satan working on people's minds. That's why you have to pray for your leaders especially. Pray for me. Pray for your pastor. Because Satan wants to work at leading us astray from Christ. Those are the two purposes that Satan uses demons for. May I pray for you? Father, I pray for this person whom Satan is working. And I tell Satan, you're, you're going to quit blinding the mind of this person. And this person is coming to Jesus. And for that child of God who's come to the Lord, stop it. Quit deceiving them and leading them astray from their devotion to Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.